plus the next sample 218 minus 226 square plus the next one is 235 minus 226 square plus my next value 227 minus 226 square plus 216 minus 226 what square then that for the last sample club three three also says that 200 minus 205.8 square 222 minus 205.8 square plus 197 minus 22 no, 205.8 also square plus 206 minus 205.8 square plus 204 minus 205.8 square. So in other words, I'm saying that we should add all the That's the of things we have here. Okay? <laughs> all the additions we have here which you sum all of them. And when you sum all of them, that should give you the sum of squares within the groups. That is SSW. And by addition, when we sum this value here, okay, plus the value we have here, plus the value we have here, we should have a total of one, one, one nine point six. This is our SSW for all the groups. Is that clear, please? That should be easy for you. Then, if I find SSW, I need to find degrees of freedom within also groups. So, let me say this is DFW, it's also N minus what k capital n big n and we said the n here is the number of all the sum of all the samples okay we just want to know how many sample it should be 15 here sorry because we have five sample size for club one five sample size for club two five sample size for club three Addition of these three gives us what? 15. Then the number of the same population, which is K, we have club one, club two, club three, which is also what? Three. So my DFW will give me what? 12. Once I know this, I'm able to now go ahead to also compute my means of squares within groups okay because we need to find the f word computed value which is very easy at this stage okay so let me come here whiteboard again great so my m s w is s s w divided by the degrees of freedom W, which is giving us big N minus small A. Okay, and from what we have done, we will say that this will be equated as what? One, 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 nine, six divided by 12. And that should give us 93.3. So now I have my MSB value here and I have my MSW value here. My F computed is saying I should find my MSB divided by my MSW. In this case, 2, 3, 5, 8, which 2 divided by 93.3. That should give you 25.275. This is my F computed. We still have not said anything about the hypothesis, but that is the whole reason why we are doing this. So now that I know my F computed, 
I should be able to now determine my F critical. It is based on the value of the F critical. Then we can decide whether we are going to accept the null hypothesis or we are rejecting the null hypothesis. So I come here to say that in order for me to find my F critical, let me write it here, F critical value. And this is the same as using the critical value approach. Okay. So F critical. Okay. We have to use the table. We have to use the table, the F distribution table to find the value for F critical. And this is how we read it. We have the alpha value from the problem. Just as I said, alpha is given as 0 0.05. Okay. Then degrees of freedom for numerator, which is the small n minus one was what two. Then the degrees of freedom for the denominator is also big N minus K. That should Clap be daddy. 12. Clap for daddy. Clap for daddy. Okay. Clap for daddy. Moses, please, can you mute yourself? You're muting. If you don't unmute yourself, I'll just remove you from the class. So those who are ready will pay attention. All right. So like I said, it's simply to say that in reading your F critical, guys, we need something like this. F alpha degrees of freedom numerator, degrees of freedom denominator. This is what we need to read from the F table in order to get our F critical value. So if you have your table with you, please go, go to F distribution table. So I can uh, try and explain how to read the table with you, okay? Okay, so I have my F distribution table here. And as you can see, it's also telling you the area or the probability. That's the shaded region. The shaded region is the area of rejection. Okay. Means that once I know my alpha value, the interesting thing about the F distribution table is that you will see that just beside the degrees of freedom for the denominator, there are alpha values given to each of them. Okay, so that if I have denominator one, we have 0.1 alpha value, 0 0.05 alpha value, 0 0.025 alpha value, then 0 0.01 alpha value. Then on top, at the top there, you will see numerator degrees of freedom, also giving us one to 1,000. So if I know my numerator degrees of freedom, and I know my denominator degrees of freedom and alpha is given, I should be able to uh, indicate the appropriate value for F critical. And in our example, our numerator degrees of freedom is what? From what we have done, what is the numerator degrees of freedom? Can somebody help? That is two, okay? So I've highlighted the numerator degrees of freedom. Yeah, we can't hear you. Can't hear you, sir. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes sir. Please, can we can you. hear you. All right, so let's proceed. So I'm saying that if you have your table, look out for 
the numerator degrees of freedom. What we computed was two. Then we look for the denominator degrees of freedom. That is what was the value as well. Uh, that was, that's 12, okay? So when I come here, I'm looking for two, which is here, under two, all these values, start, sorry, starting from 49, under two down, downwards, are the probable credit card value. But we have to go and look for 12. 12 is somewhere here, that's 12. I'm highlighting this one too. Then the alpha value we are using is what? 0 0.05, so when I select 12, I come and look for what the alpha value, which is 0 0.05, also highlighted here. Then I am tracing horizontally to where two is. So vertically from two, you come downwards, then horizontally you move to where the corresponding alpha value for denominator is, which is this value, 3.89. So my F critical is 3.89 from the F distribution table. Is it self-explanatory? Yes, it yes. Great, great. Up here. That's good. So in this case, when Thank I come you. back here, my F critical is 3.89. Now we are comparing F computed and F critical, because it is at this point that we have to make a decision whether we are rejecting the null hypothesis or we are failing to reject the null hypothesis. In simple term, we're saying that if F computed is greater than F critical, reject HO. Therefore, in our case, we have 25.275 comparing to 3.89. This is greater than this. So we reject what? The null hypothesis. Then we can draw our conclusion after we have rejected this, the null hypothesis. And remember the null hypothesis we had was saying that uh, HO, was stating that all the mean are what? The same. Now that you have rejected this, our conclusion is that the distance yielded for each of the club are different from each other. That is the conclusion. It means that they are not what? The same. So if this example is just to the vaccine example I was given, from this, we'll say that the efficiency or the potent for each vaccine, vaccine dif is different from each other. Although they are all performing or they are giving us the uh, maybe immunity or antibodies to fight against the COVID virus, each one of them, the way it works is different from the other. That is to say that we've been able to establish these problems and that ANOVA will be the best tool to select when you are analyzing differences among distinct groups that are more than two. As long as all the assumptions have been fulfilled, you can go on to use analysis of what variance. So from your slide, you will see that from the slide, you see that we went further to compute one after the other. So this table actually summarizes all the things we have done, okay? In manually, we can do it. In Excel too, we can do all these things. This report you see here is what Excel generated for us based on the input we provided to the data. So, Counts here say that the sample size for each of them, five, 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 as we did. Summation, we did so to find the average. This divided by this gives you this divided by this divided by this will give you this. So typically, 
if I want to give you a table to analyze in the exams, I will bring out this report and delay some of the information and still have, ask you to complete the table. And remember that your evaluation, I think, will be multiple choice exam. So this table can come and you can have about seven questions under the table asking you to provide the answers or select which answer is the 